Yeah, bye-bye. Hey, engineer, are you done flying that hook yet? Just give me one second. I promise I'm working on it. Man, hurry up! I think I got it. What do you think? That still ain't right! What am I even paying you for, man? Hey, man. That was a completely made up scenario, but I guarantee some of y'all have been there. I've been there myself, trying to fly the hook, getting all nervous, underarm start sweating, palm start itching. <laughs> your client is ready to go, but I am here to save you, man. Learning how to properly fly your hook and make sure that it's in time every time can make you a client for life, all right? So let's go ahead and jump off into the session and look at the proper way to fly a hook in Pro Tools. What's up YouTube? I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com and this channel is all about helping you to record and mix better and faster. This video is all about how to fly a hook in Pro Tools. Now, what is flying a hook? <laughs> Not me taking my hat and throwing it because, you know, I got them fish hooks on my hat. <laughs> um, but flying a hook basically means that I'm going to take a hook after it's been recorded one time, the chorus of the song. I'm going to copy that from its original location and paste it wherever else that chorus repeats during the song. Now, the benefit to flying a hook is that my artist doesn't have to record the same thing over and over. We can spend our time focusing on the first pass of the hook and once we get that perfected we can then copy that perfect performance and place it everywhere in the session where we need that hook to lay now some of us get this wrong and it can be very frustrating especially when you have a client and you're trying to just nudge that hook back and forth i'm going to show you a method to where you never have to nudge another hook again all right um and and yeah it's going to be really easy to fly hooks from here on out after watching this video so if you're down for that go ahead and hit a thumbs up one of the first things that we need to do anytime you want to fly a hook is make sure that you have the session's tempo locked into your Pro Tools session. Now, I like to use a method called Identify Beat to actually find my session's tempo. It makes it super easy to find the hook and fly it on grid, okay? I'm not going to explain Identify Beat right now. I have a whole full video that I will link down in the description of this video so that you can go and watch that first. So if you need to learn how to find the session's tempo, please pause this video, go watch that video, and come back here and we'll talk about flying this hook. So now that I've got my session's tempo locked into my Pro Tools session, everything is just really going to make so much sense musically to my, to my session, okay? So I found out that the session's tempo, the beats per minute, is 77 beats per minute, and I'm using markers in this session, session to actually help me navigate and know exactly where things need to be. So I have a marker placed here from the start of my first hook, and then this marker is where my second hook needs to start. Now, how did I lay these markers? Well, I'll just do it all over. You find it, as long as you're on grid, you can click as you're in grid mode in Pro Tools, make sure you enter grid mode. I'm gonna go right to that position where my next hook will start musically, and I can hit enter on my numeric keypad, or go over to my markers ruler and hit this little plus button. Once I hit that plus button, I'm just gonna name this hook two, okay? And that'll be the spot for my second hook to come in. Now, here's where Pro Tools grid mode really comes in handy. It's gonna be super easy because since I'm in grid, I'll go up to my grid value selector and set that as a one bar. Now, by having that as one bar versus being like a 132nd note, you see how I have all of these little small um, um, grid lines or grid sections that I could make selections on. By changing this grid size to just one bar, it really eliminates the possibilities that I will make any small mistakes because I'll be working with larger one bar increments. So here's one method that I could use to fly my hook. These two tracks here are the hook tracks, so I'll, I'm going to actually change the color on these so that we don't get confused. All right, so just these very first two tracks, these are my hook, and then I have verse uh, two tracks for my verse. Well, one simple way to fly a hook in Pro Tools is simply just gonna be to make a selection on those tracks that you wanna copy and paste from, and, and in this case, I'm gonna start at the first hook marker, right, and I'm just using my selector tool. I'm gonna make us uh, start my selection at that first hook marker, and I'm going to extend down since I do have two tracks that are included in my hook. And I'm going to select that entire hook. Here's one way. And then once all of that is selected, you notice that I have 
uh, I'm cutting off part of this beginning uh, part of my hook. But it's okay. One thing I could do, I could start this selection one bar earlier, one bar before that hook marker. So I could just start this selection here and I'll hit copy, command C, and I'm gonna come one bar before my second hook and paste it, command V. Now let's listen to a little bit of this first hook and then we'll listen to a little bit of the second hook to make sure that we got them in time. Okay, that's hook one, hook two. All right, as you can hear, that hook has been laid perfectly in time. Let's try another more faster way to fly the hook. All right, so another way that we can use to fly the hook is by actually, remember how I had that little uh, selection to where I was one bar before? Well, in this case, I'll just go right on that marker and I'm gonna extend this selection all the way to the next hook marker. And instead of copying and pasting, what I'm gonna do is hit Command D. This activates the duplicate function and it not only duplicates the clips that I had selected, but also that blank space, which helps to keep this hook in time. If I had to put another hook, I could just Command D several times and place this hook everywhere this, that it needs to be in the session, every eight bars or every 12 bars, whatever is required for this particular song. Let's undo that. Now, you will notice that the beginning of the hook, since it started a little bit before the one bar mark, is being cut off. Not to worry, editing in Pro Tools is completely non-destructive, and all I need to do is use my trim tool to trim the starting part of the hook back out. Spirit, I was gonna get it at another nice and neat. Now, sometimes you may be working with a beat where it might be a little bit harder to find the tempo, or you just don't know how to find the tempo, or there is something in the session that's causing the tempo to change, and there isn't a constant tempo, so it's gonna be a little bit harder for you to find that tempo. Let me show you how to actually fly the, t fly the hook in slip mode, all right? So, I'm gonna get out of grid mode, and imagine that I'm not locked to my grid at all. Let's delete this hook on this second one. Now, when you are working on find, flying a hook using slip mode, you need to be able to locate mm, landmarks in the transients of the music. So what I'm gonna do is start to zoom in here on my two track beat. I'm zooming in. And as I zoom in, I'm at each level, I'm just placing my cursor on closer and closer to these transients. Now, as I see the transient peaks become apparent to me to where I can identify them, what I wanna do is find some type of landmark within this transient that I can remember, and I'm gonna use that landmark to copy from and paste from. So, in this case, you see this little very tall little, little peak here in this waveform? I'm gonna get right up to that peak. Okay, cool, I'm able to cut right into that peak right there. In, in that waveform, and then I'm gonna bring my cursor down. So here's how we do that. If you use P and semicolon, semicolon will take your selection down to the next track. P will move your selection up. So if you notice what I just did, I just simply in slip mode clicked at this specific point in time based off the transient that I'm able to see Right? And I'm picking something that's really obvious. I'm not like picking none of these super small transients because I'm gonna have to find this exact same transient later. So you see, I'm like right in the middle of this W. Huh, <laughs> wavy. Right in the middle of that W. I'm gonna use my semicolon key to bring my selection down. And since my hook is spanning over two tracks, I need to bring it down again, but also keep that selection. So I'm gonna hold the shift key and hit that semicolon. If you notice that the P and semicolon are not working for you in order to bring your selection up and down, make sure that this little command keyboard focus icon is lit yellow right here in the corner of your edit window. That enables you to use one key shortcuts in Pro Tools. Select, have my starting point for where I'm gonna copy my hook from. I'm gonna zoom out and then simply holding shift I'm gonna click somewhere at the end of that hook with the selector tool. And now that I have it all selected, I'm gonna hit Command C to copy. 
Let's go over to the end of the verse and find the spot where I'm gonna actually paste this. So I'm at the start of my hook two, I'm gonna zoom in here, and each level that I zoom in, I'm gonna be getting more and more accurate, and what I'm looking for is that same peak. You can see it starting to come in the view here. Remember that W that we copied from and how I got right in that same peak at the beginning of the white wave file? Now I'm in that same spot, and what I'm gonna do is hit the semicolon key to bring that cursor down, hold shift, bring it, extend it down to the track below, and then paste my hook, command V. Let's zoom out, and of course, that beginning part was cut off just like it was the other time. All I have to do is use my trim tool to bring back anything that was cut off. Let's listen and hear the accuracy of this hook. Wanna get it at another day. Yo, man, that's perfect. If you use these techniques that I just showed you in this video, you will never be embarrassed in front of a client again trying to nudge your hook back and forth and wasting, <laughs> and wasting precious moments of your studio time trying to do something as easy as flying a hook. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com. If you found this helpful, please join our community by hitting that subscribe button and put a thumbs up on this video and share this with somebody who you think could benefit. Maybe you a client who has been sitting in a session a little frustrated with your engineer, or maybe you're the engineer that just needed to learn this, man. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com. Thanks for watching. Be dope. Yeah, bye-bye. Hey, engineer, are you done flying that hook yet? Thank you.